Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're exploring a fascinating topic that's especially important for all the female athletes and fitness enthusiasts out there. And that is the potential impact of hormonal contraceptives on adaptations to resistance training. Specifically, we'll look at how these contraceptives might influence muscle growth, strength, and power gains. So let's dive into the latest research led by Nolan and colleagues in 2024 to see what they found out. So to start with, hormonal contraceptives are widely used by many women not just for birth control but also for managing menstrual cycle symptoms. These contraceptives work by delivering synthetic hormones like estrogen and progestin which can significantly change the levels of hormones produced by the body itself. This leads to a crucial question for many women. Do these hormonal changes impact our ability to adapt to resistance training effectively? To tackle this question, Nolan and colleagues carried out a thorough systematic review and meta-analyses in 2024. They examined a wide range of studies to explore whether hormonal contraceptives affect physiological adaptations to resistance training, particularly focusing on skeletal muscle hypertrophy, neuromuscular strength, and power output. Their goal was to pinpoint any consistent trends or differences in how users of hormonal contraceptives compare to non-users when responding to structured resistance training. The authors reviewed more than 70 studies from the literature, but ultimately only eight studies met all of the inclusion criteria. These studies primarily consisted of experimental designs that compared hormonal contraceptive users to non-users during resistance training interventions aimed at inducing muscular adaptations such as hypertrophy, power, and strength. Strength. Based on the available data, the authors reported that the use of hormonal contraceptives had no statistically significant effect on muscular adaptations, including hypertrophy, strength, and power. Through their multi-level analysis, they concluded that there is no evidence-based rationale to advocate for or against the use of hormonal contraceptives in females engaging in resistance exercise training for the purposes of increasing these adaptations. Additionally, there isn't compelling evidence to suggest that using hormonal contraceptives would hinder these improvements. Instead, an individualized approach that considers each person's response to hormonal contraceptives and their specific reasons for using them might be more suitable. So what does this mean for female athletes? Well, the evidence indicates that the impact of these hormonal contraceptives on resistance training adaptations can be highly individualized. This underscores the importance of a personalized approach to resistance training. Athletes and coaches should closely monitor their physiological responses and performance metrics. For example, if muscle growth or strength gains seems to plateau during certain phases of the menstrual cycle, then adjusting variables like exercise selection, intensity, or recovery strategies could help optimize outcomes, regardless of any hormonal influences. This systematic review and meta analyses by Nolan and colleagues has certainly helped in advancing our understanding, but there still remain some significant gaps in the literature. More high quality research is needed to develop evidence-based recommendations for female athletes who use hormonal contraceptives. And in the meantime, my recommendation is to stay flexible in your training approach, listen to your body, and like my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, consider tracking your training metrics and responses a little bit more rigorously. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. And if you have any questions or thoughts about today's topic, feel free to leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're interested in personalized coaching, then check out the details on my website linked in the description below. I'll see you next time.